Hello everyone, this is your Decrypt and this is my very first video on YouTube. I'm going to be showing how to solve the Try Hack Me Machine Retro. So I have already started the machine using the Try Hack Me account and the machine's IP address is 10.10.175.14. So before we do anything, the very first step is to perform network scan on the machine. Let's start. So we'll do, we use nmap. I guess we probably need to be a root to avoid uh, to be able to perform still scans. So I'll switch to user root. Okay, so let's do nmap and we're gonna do probe not which will avoid sending uh, detection probes to the machine to to see if it's if they are online or not we in this case we know they are online and SV for service scan and for SC for performing uh, scans using the scripts uh, that are inbuilt with an nmap so we use SV along with SC because SV is very good at determining the service and SC leverages that particular uh, foot uh, single uh, signature uh, found by the the version scan and uses upon our property script in this in maps uh, you know inventory so we'll save it in I usually use I usually use the end map format because I don't really use the other grippable or XML types so I'll use nmap I'll save it in a file called retro.nmap and the IP of our machine so while is is running we open a new tab because if you can see here, I have not specified any port ranges, so it's by default is going to uh, only scan the top 1000 ports. Uh, in, in fact, it's already done. So let's also do a full port scan. P P will scan uh, all ports from 1 to 65535. If you want to scan the port number 0, uh, you specify port 0 to 65535. So I don't necessarily think this is going to be useful in in our case with this machine. So I'll just go with the default one. I opened a new tab. Okay, we see the port 80, which is a HTTP port running IIS 10, as well as 3389, which is remote desktop protocol service. So, as usual, the very first uh, thing we need to see is go to the the port that's serving the web site. And in this case, port 80, we see an IIS default page. Uh, we can try to guess some of the, you know, very fundamental basic directories that we usually found, uh, find on the websites. Uh, so here, we just won't see anything with the manual guess. So what we can do is pass this through uh, the GoBuster or whatever uh, directory brute forcing tool that you you prefer. I prefer GoBuster because I'm just uh, I'm aware of the syntax of GoBuster more than any other tool. So we we'll use GoBuster and see if it's going to need a dir in front of it. I guess it should. It should be needing the dir argument. So dash so dir will put the GoBuster in directory brute force mode and dash u and give that URL. I copied from that and 
I'm gonna give the word list it's usually present here used to 2.3 medium text and I'm going to run it with 50 threads and I'm going to look for extensions like common extensions like PHP text HTML and log what else HTM maybe and since this is a an IIS we should also check for ASP and ASPX Let's, let's do that right now and we might add the other extensions if needed later. So I'm going to save it in a file for, okay, this is port 80, so port80.log and let it run. While it's scanning, we'll go back and see if nmap has found any other scripts something wrong here so this is why we need dash probe not I believe so let's give another try with dash pn it's gonna take some while and uh, you can skip to the part where I actually find a directory that's valid or you can watch me watch the screen. After a few minutes, we see that Cobus just found a directly called Retro. Uh, so let's go and try. Okay, so here we see a web page looks like some game information. Um, too bad with the game, so I'm gonna assume that this has to do something with the name Retro because these are all old Orchid games, I guess. Right, so let's keep brute forcing this directory here. So before that, when you see these uh, these kind of web pages with a lot of words or, or paragraphs in it, it's a, it could be a cue that um, you might be want you might want to use a tool something like Cool to actually uh, scrape these words from this page and use it as a will list for potential passwords for any accounts you might discover later. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it later, so let's go and brute force this directory right here. I think I can safely uh, stop this one right at this point and do it. Do it retro. And we'll call it port 80 underscore retro alert log. Right off the bat, we see the index for PHP that it's a PHP application and we also see WP dash content so it's almost certain that this site is powered by WordPress so let's go to the site here okay my bad so we might be we need to be looking for slash retro slash wordpress login so yes so we have a wordpress admin login exposed on this application so one other interesting file that we usually look at here on a, any wordpress file uh, wordpress site is the xml rpc.php file if this file is not disabled we can leverage that to uh, perform a brute force on on an account that we discover so 
we do see that XMORPC uh, file is present on the server. So all we need now is a brute, uh, an account to brute force. So we'll run this file through WordPress scan and do attach uh, dash dash enum rate user. So we'll look up the help file uh, first. So here are the arguments that WordPress scan or WP scanner takes. So we for Wobos uh, enumerate options dash e and okay and so on. So where do I specify the host address? Okay, right here. So WordPress can that's the URL. Forget the protocol. And we need okay, so if you need a avoid detection with a random user agent, you can do that. Or if you suspect there's a WAF on the application, you can still uh, bypass it in some instances with a random uh, user agent. And let's let's run the scan assets and see what we, uh, it's going to come up with. So meanwhile, we'll look at uh, some of these files because the license or readme.html files often relieve the version of the application uh, that the server is running. So we look at the other one. Okay. So what's the version? That's the one we saw earlier. There's usually something like install.php, something like that. So let's let's see if there's an install. Okay, it's not here. Okay, we'll come back to that later uh, because I'm pretty confident that there's a install.php something similar to that that shows the version of the application. So here coming back to the previous tab we have the WordPress scan finished and looks like yes it, we found this already we guessed it so we can use that for brute forcing the passwords and what else? So it's using a 90s retro. So the name for the box is retro. Okay, I think we might need to use dash dash enumerate user maybe. Okay, I think it should be Enum, maybe? Okay, let's go back and look at the, the help dash E. Hmm. Okay, looks like that worked, or maybe it didn't. We'll see. So yeah, it says enumerating users. I guess I'm on a newer version of WordSpot scan because usually the syntax is dash dash enumerate user. Well, anyways, uh, we have a user identified called Wade, and it found the user through this URL. So let's take a look what's on that URL. 
yes so if you see it has a name wade and oh this is a potential username that we want to uh, try and brute force the password for but before that let's see if it's a valid username by navigating back to the uh, wordpress login uh, wait password pass so it clearly states that username the password you entered for the username wade is incorrect which means wade is indeed a valid user on the site so now that we have the XML RPC file as well as we have a, a valid username, let's go and brute force uh, So we can stop directory brute forcing at this point as we are almost on a potential footfold here. So how do you brute force XML RPC file? So there's a file on a tool called WordPress brute force, XML RPC brute force, something like that. So let's search Google. Uh, maybe GitHub. Yes, so let's look at this file, XML RPC brute force exploit. Okay, let's pull this file. So I'm also uh, I'm actually downloading it in my current directory that I'm using for uh, the hack, try and hack my machine so that I can go back and remove all that later. So we have the git cloned so let's try and run this see what are the options that we need to supply for this okay so we need and the username so we have the URL for the XML RPC which is this and use the file that comes with it. Uh, most default parrot or colleague distributions which is the rockq.txt file and we use the username wait So we are confident that this target is indeed vulnerable to brute force exploit. And that's not what I expected. Looks like it's gonna print out all the error responses. Uh, let's see if there's a way to actually stop here. Let's see if there's a way to actually uh, suppress all this noise that's mm. H mm. looks like it shouldn't let's see let's go with the uh, version 2 and see if that suppresses the noise because at the end of the day we don't want to be looking at a ton of invalid attempts because it's going to be a lot of them on your console so looks like this works. Um, let's keep it at uh, you know the proposing mode. And let's use this time to do something else on the side and see if we find something else interesting. So let's go back to the retro page and see if there are any of the clickable links lead to another page on the same server. So these are all pointing to external sites. We don't want that. Okay, it looks like a bunch of gibberish that we obviously wouldn't want to be looking at. And scroll a little bit more. Okay, we have a hello world post by Wade. 
let's click on this because it's actually pointing to a page on the server so it's by user weight we can write some replies but that's not what we are interested in uh, so before we forget let's go back and to a cool uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right uh, it's C E W L uh, we don't want a new terminal we know we want a new tab right so let's go back to the retro folder and this tool this uh, that takes an argument uh, as with, you know a URL as an argument and sp scrapes the page for all potential words that can be used as passwords and prints it out on the std out console so we'll see if it's going to need any tweaking before we run it oh is the host still alive let's double check hold shift and refresh yes it is live uh, I'm not sure yes it just took its time to print it out uh, this is ugly so let's do the same but this time we write into a file called pass those text And coming back and looking at the WordPress brute force, if we don't see any matched passwords yet, so we'll see if we have any luck with this word list here. Okay, it's done. Let's So we can further tailor the boot list with, you know, if we know actually the the minimum number of characters, the maximum number of characters, the complexity, alphanumeric, all this information. So we can use hashcat to actually create another password based on of this list, which includes all the complexities that are mandated by uh, your application so since this is a ctf and this is a oscp kind of box uh, i don't think it's required here so let's go and run the same uh, wordpress brute force scan on on the new wallet we have so we switch back to wordpress brute force and what we can do is copy this And use the password, the pass text file as the password list. Looks like we saved it in. Oh, why did I save it? Uh, in retro. So, where am I? Okay, it's one level up. Retro pass. Uh, looks like it's already done. Uh, let's double check. Yep, and it hasn't found a match based on that word list. So we will still. Uh, run with the old world list so let's also keep looking at the site to see if we have any other information so let's take a look here oh actually if you can see here on this uh, this comment it says leaving myself a note here in just case I forget to spell it.
Parvara. Okay, let's copy that because it looks like a potential password. And and see if we yeah we still haven't found any passwords with the the world list that we're using. So you know why don't we give it a try? So let's go to the slash WordPress login directory. Uh, I mean slash retro and uh, WordPress login PHP page. And we can use the word Wade and use the password proviso possible. And we'll see if it's going to work. It's taking a while to load. It's usually a sign that it's working. So we have a valid password, but it was found on th this common page here. So it's a good idea to actually uh, run your tools in the background and go back and take a look at the site, especially uh, if you have, uh, you know, a WordPress site or you know where you have people can come and comment stuff. Uh, you can use sensitive words uh, from the comments or even use cool on this page and use the word list uh, as a result of, a resultant of that as the password. Uh, possible files for your brute forcing. So enough uh, enough of that. Let's go back and just stop this brute force because we already have one password. So password is this click here so that I forget. Okay, so it's a typical PHP. How do you leverage a typical PHP? How do you get a shell from a PHP admin page is pretty simple. You go to the appearance and you go to uh, theme editor. It's going to present you with, oh, I can, I understand. Uh, it's going to present you with uh, a page where you can actually edit the code from the console. And we want to be including a PHP code for so that we can send a reversal back to our machine. So let's go with the 404 template. So this 404, why I'm using that? Because first thing, we don't have to search for where this file is located on the server because it's going to be getting loaded automatically when you actually navigate to oh, and any invalid location on the site. So for example, let's go to retro and say, encourage me, right? So encourage me uh, by hitting like, hitting subscribe, giving your comments on how my first video is, uh, what you wish you learned better uh, so that I can improve myself. I'm trying to be as productive as possible, as well as as useful as possible for you guys. Uh, so that uh, you are able to uh, to better print testing at the end of the day. So yeah. So going back to why we uh, we are here, it looks like we haven't uh, had a valid directory called encourage me here. So let's edit this file to maybe echo something. and update it. So let's go back and reload uh, maybe .php. Okay, so I'm kind of, okay, so it's usually under themes and 90s retro, if I'm not wrong. Let's Google 
WordPress plugin path so that you know we, tr we can actually try and find the 404 page and not entirely sure why this didn't work here but we'll try and figure that out okay so we can, we can go back here and it says themes wordpress content themes your team's name so and our theme name is if you go back and look here in the wordpress canvas so it's it's going to give you the team name which is 90s retro let's copy that And what are we looking for here? Uh, maybe a random characters here and hope. 404.php. Oh, here we are. So apparently it didn't work as I expected uh, to be able to find a page that's not existent. Uh, actually, it should work. Uh, let's try again in some other directory or file because it's a 404 template, so it should be presenting the 404, uh, 404 page on a non existent location. So let's go to Hello World here instead of this. Let's say, yeah. So for some reason, it's going to work only on the actual uh, directories inside the WordPress application. So yeah, so you can either find the, the, the particular page that you're editing through this uh, using the, the direct location for PHP files, or if you're editing a 404 page, go to uh, any page or any uh, in the blog site and try and navigate from within that to an uh, invalid directory. So now that we know we have code execution, uh, let's try to include a reverse shell payload so we get a shell on the box. So PHP, we do a Google search and we are on a Windows box because we saw the IIS server, which usually is running on Windows box. Uh, so if you don't remember what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. So we have an IIS server, which is an inbuilt uh, web server in Windows server installation. Uh, it's called Internet Information Services, so that we know uh, we are in a web shell. Uh, sorry, we are in a Windows box, so we need to have a web shell that works on a Windows box. So let's take a look. It's good practice to actually take a look into the any files that you're going to be using uh, to see how it's going to work. So it's base64 encoded and is that it or is it a gzip uh, encoded as well oh let's just try and figure that out later uh, we obviously want to get a shell on the box that's our main goal here so what we can do is just copy that and go back here paste uh, remove this And we need to specify our recent port. I always use uh, for, port 443 because it's a HTTPS uh, default port. So usually it's not blocked by firewalls or you know any host-based firewalls, any or any additional uh, firewall tools that the system might be equipped with. And what's the IP of our machine here? So if to do... 
So that's our IP. Looks good. What else we need? Temp. I'm not entirely sure about this because sometimes you see uh, the, f the directory is non-existent on the on the target, uh, but that's something that you gotta be keep uh, keeping in your mind. So let's leave it as is as 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 of this point and see if, if this is gonna help us get a reversal on the machine. So let's update. So what we need to do is a refresh here. Before that, we do we listen on our system at cat in uh, we don't need n uh, we'll just do a, a lvp listen verbose on port that we specify here is 443 okay it's it's requiring a root travel permission so switch to root i this i guess it's only because we are on a port that's below uh, one uh, thousand twenty-four. So usually on machines, on especially Linux machines, any port number below the standard port uh, range, which is uh, any ports below thousand twenty-four, is reserved and can only be uh, used by a corresponding service or an higher privileged user. So, for example, if we go to a, to, uh, a terminal where we are not root. Mm, I'll show that here. For example, if you go here, if you try to listen on, say, 5555, you see that it's working. So, but I actually want to listen on the same that I mentioned before. So, now that we are listening, let's go back and refresh this page. Okay, and we are supposed to get a show. Okay, so it could be one of those reasons that I mentioned before uh, that we don't have uh, enough of many location on the server that we can leverage. So what we can do is uh, try and print uh, the current server path for this application and use that as a location for our uh, web show or you know what I'm, uh, I I also have another idea let's use a simple uh, invoke command uh, using the PHP so we're doing a call back ticks, uh, which means it uh, it's tells the system to execute, uh, tells PHP to execute this with the system shell. And within this, uh, let's say, since it's a Windows system, uh, let's say uh, there, it should print out the current working directory contents. So let's try that out. So yes, it works as we expect. So let's go and try and use this and make it a reversal on the machine. So there are uh, numerous tools uh, or numerous scripts that are available on GitHub that will help you get a PowerShell script, uh, PowerShell reverse show. So let's use one of those PowerShell script to execute PowerShell on this box and get a reverse show on our, uh, on our on the victim machine. So one of the popular one is Nishong shells. And the one we are looking for is shells invoke PowerShell TCP. So what we do is take this file, 
um, get it on our machine. Just navigate back on directory and go to retro and then do get on that location. So let's move this to a simple file in Oxel.ps1. So let's see what's inside the script here. So it can create a fine interactive shell from a target. Okay, so what we need here is we have some examples. So reverse will help you get a reverse shell and bind will actually create a port, uh, actually open a port on the victim machine and listens uh, for a connection on that and grants a shell uh, to any IPs connecting to that uh, particular port number. So which is not a really good idea in your pen testing engagements before, uh, especially when you're um, pen testing an internet facing target because it's gonna leave uh, attack surface open for uh, actual attackers or any boss that might be crossing the, uh, scanning the internet. So let's go back and use the uh, the reverse shell script which, which help us get the victim machine send us a shell on a port off of our choice on our machine. So what do you need, uh, need to do is copy this and add it to the end of the file here and specify the port and I don't remember reverse uh, what our IP was so let's save it here go back copy this open okay so we have this uh, so we can now use this to send a crucial and another thing we need to use is to know the command that will fetch this file from our server and send us a reverse show so first we need to serve this file on our attack machine So I use Python HTTP server module to bring up a web server on port 80. And it's both because we are root and we are using port 80, which is a reserve port. So next thing what we need to do is the command for PowerShell. So I usually type it off uh, from doing a bit of Google search because I hate PowerShell. I don't, I don't remember it, uh, but I know that it's very useful in pen testing. So, you know, just just go and learn it. I'm going to be learning it soon uh, also. So let's use PowerShell, download uh, download, execute. remote script so let's go here and see if there's anything useful yes we have mm, we don't need proxy uh, so let's go back and find a, another script that, that is simple and works without any proxy Okay, so this here looks like it's it's something we would like to try. And let's go here, paste this. So what it what this is gonna do is invoke PowerShell process on the local machine and then run this command, which is this. 
and we ought to be careful because we see a lot of codes here so that's the reason I use to back uh, ticks and use the echo because it allows us to use the remaining single and double codes on our actual payload script so here we need to go and change our IP uh, to the IP of our machine and just this and we want to fetch shell.ps1 file All right that looks good and hopefully this will work let's give it a shot so let's make sure that we are listening on port 443 okay so if this worked it should fetch a file from our machine and execute it and send a shell back on our port 443 so let's go and get a refresh and see if it's gonna work Uh, we see it, our shell script has been fetched by the victim machine which is the retro here and we have a shell so first thing what I do is do so now we have a shell on the box we need to find ways to escalate privileges and usually when we get a shell from an IIS service uh, web server it's going to be an IIS service account uh, so let's see I think I user is maybe Internet Explorer uh, IIS user uh, let's look at the privileges as this is something you want to look at cool so run this privileges command is usually run a script that actually automates all this uh, recon or in uh, privilege escalation checks on the on the box um, so what I usually go for is a script call then piece it's a very good script that will have syntax highlighting also gives you uh, another uh, resource where you can actually use the findings from the script and try and see if you can uh, escalate privileges uh, so this is something you can take a look later uh, it's pretty useful but I'm gonna go back here now because we already know that we have a privilege it's Will allow us to escalate to system on unpatched machines what the privilege is is se impersonate privilege so if we take a look uh, at the description here it's, it says impersonate, uh, impersonate a client after authentication uh, we are obviously authenticated uh, as a user on the system so it, it will help us impersonate a client uh, what this really means is As per Microsoft, it gives you an example of how uh, how an interesting person privileges can be used on the system. So, so it says it's a security setting that was first introduced in Windows 2000 and will help us impersonate a client after authentication. What this means is when you assign this privilege to a user you permit programs that run on behalf of that user to impersonate a client so I can tell you that it's kind of running a script at a SUIE but you know that's not exactly the same 
but it basically tells you that you're able to impersonate another user or a service uh, or my apologies another user or an account on the system to run a particular process or program so let's go back and see how we can leverage that uh, and exploit the machine just search for exploit and the very first thing that comes up is the juicy potato exploit so juicy potato is a famous exploit for taking advantage of local impersonation and there is also Prince Buffer but let's go with potato uh, so, so you can search for juicy potato oh exe we find here an executable let's say okay so we can download this and save it to our machine on this path so fetch this download it so we have and how we can exploit this so let's go back on how to use and see how to use this command allows you to okay if you'll need target CLSID I believe yeah so we need a listen bot and the program that we want to execute uh, which is the program to launch to and the t specifies how do you want to call the process with token or as user star will try the both and optional arguments include uh, com server listen address so on and so forth so let's try a very simple example so what we need here is we need okay so we need Uh, the exploit itself and we need mandatory or so listen port and I'm using this is the listen port on our machine let's use port and we need the program. so we need something we can execute that will help uh, that will get us a reverse shell as a system or admin uh, so in this case it's usually a system so we need a program shell dot exe and we will use star uh, because why not right create process as and see which one works so I'll save this and cat. So what we need here that's missing is the shell.exe. So you can do this either ways. So you can actually create an MSF Venom uh, shell executable that you can download it to the system uh, on the victim machine, or you can create a bat file, which pretty much uh, does the same script uh, work that we used for getting a reverse show. Uh, I prefer the latter because it's simple. So I'll create another file called show.bat and that'll help that execute this command. So we'll do this to copy this paste 
and we will have it as is it should work save it to show that bad so if you look here we have the exploit.exe file juicy potato.exe the shell.bat so in you know, use it we have this and we have this and all we need to do is now is uh, execute this on the victim machine so for that we need to be able to write a file to the system path uh, wherever we have access so let's try if we can write here so do a echo test on this dot text and we have access so that's good uh, one good thing with uh, using PowerShell is you can use Linux uh, commands like ls uh, to list directory which I prefer more than using the dir command um, anyways so let's download these two files first we are already listening uh, we are already serving that particular directory which is slash retro on port 80 so what we need is just download this file so cert util which is an inbuilt windows tool which we can leverage for downloading files your old cache split f and this is the syntax for this command guys uh, so if you're interested in what this actually means you can google this up uh, but it basically helps us to get files from attacker server or attack machine to to the victim box so you have the exploit.exe first and save it in a file called or maybe just jp oh let's do the same okay so we have the file downloaded if you see you can see that's being pulled from our machine and we also need this file we could pretty much write the file on the target box um, but I just rather download it from my box because sometimes uh, you don't always have uh, the ability to write files uh, as you wish or if you want to correct something that you mistyped that's going to be deleting a file and doing it all again so usually write my scripts or whatever I need on my box okay so we screw something up and which is we've spelled certitude incorrectly so we'll copy this okay so cool and we have the file as well as the file so if we take a look in our usage we need to be executing this so let's copy this and the program is the shell dot bat and dash t equals star if you remember we are pulling with the shell dot bat we are pulling this shell dot ps1 again like we did for the initial uh, foothold and executing that so shell dot ps1 has a command to send a reverse uh, to send a reverse shell to our machine on port 443 so we need to be listening on port 443 again if you're wondering how I need to use port 443 multiple times because we already used it here once for the initial vault it's just because the way netcat works it actually receives the shell uh, and hand over its 
to another port so that you can use the same port for another time which is very convenient for us um, so if law looks good i might be missing something here which is the directory location uh, usually we have powershell complaining about not being able to find the file so let's do this dot backslash this and listening okay so it says failed and but we pretty much know that the box is vulnerable so what we might be missing here is some options with an exploit so it says testing 499 1d34b uh, looks like it failed with this CLS ID and if you remember from this page you have an optional argument to specify the CLS ID that you want so how do you find the CLS IDs there's a folder here gives you CLS IDs for uh, different Windows versions so first we need to find the version or the operating system version we are on let's do system info and actually used a grip or, or, or find command but anyways we have x64 base pc and 2016 standard uh, server so let's see if we have a cls file for this uh, CLS code for that. So Windows Server 2016 standard, and here we are. Okay, just by looking at it, we have several ones. Uh, we just try this one first. So it's going to execute and give a uh, system shell for us, and let's see if this this will work. So. Where am I? So we are here. Copy the same command. And we have dash C. Uh, is that right? Yes, dash C. And we specify with the braces here. Okay, so take it and paste. Still listening and execute. looks like it did not pick that argument maybe sometimes uh, we need to be specifying it within codes uh, but doesn't look like it is required here but we'll, we'll give it a shot mm, oh of us read for or uh, what's wrong okay so looks about right you're listening on a port program show and dash t store c hmm, looks looks right to me and i'm not sure why it didn't work uh let's see if we need to use codes i don't think so but you know let's try uh, sometimes it's uh, the syntax conflict between the the shell and the program and that was it uh, so it says it created a process with token and we have we should be having an NT authority system on this machine and we can see here we have reverse show let's see uh, what account we are as and we are a system so that's pretty easy and you can go and fetch the flag here if you want just usually in the administrative desktop and there we are so that's all uh, I hope you
you really learned something in this video. I also want to tell you one last thing before I sign off, which is what do I do if you're not able to write to a particular directory or if you're not able to find a directory where you can write uh, your payload in. So it happens from time to time. So when we initially get a show, we go to C uses public and we use that as a temp directory equivalent in Linux. So what we do is we try and download our shells or payload or scripts here and sometimes it won't work. For example, in this instance, we get a write error, which is permissions denied. So in that case, you don't remember exactly where you initially landed or if you want to uh, if you don't want to go and try your permissions on all directory, I usually just go back to the web, web application that we used and try and see if there's a way to upload a file and then use it. So in WordPress, what you can do is uh, under pages, you can add a new page. and click on plus you can give a file and you can go and choose the file from here uh, i think you need to rename because it's going to not allow the dot exe extension so what we do here is copy the same file for example to jp.txt and we upload that publish and it says published and you go to view page or you can just use the download button here and if you can see uh, it's in uploads 2020 08 jp.txt so if you can go back uh, which is the same path that we were we were initially on and not the same but the same under the same root path so this is it uploads uh, content oh, I missed the change directory command And yep, it should be here. So from here, you can give, reuse the rename command on Windows to use rename the current directory jp.txt to jp.exe. Okay, so to use rename, you need to use so it's from here you can just search for powershell rename file and the example here gives us rename item path name is the one that we only name it as so new name jp.exe and that's how you rename and use the file so i hope you learned quite a bit in this video uh, please leave your comments and help me improve my videos obviously like i said this is my very first video i'm trying to improve myself on later videos and also let me know what uh, what other boxes you would like to me uh, to like me to solve. And with that, I will sign off and see you another time on a different box. Take care.